I think we've often heard a lot about obesity being the major contributing cause of insulin resistance and diabetes today. But I actually feel quite uh, skeptical about that because in reviewing the literature and really looking at you know, what the literature says, as well as dealing with this on a daily basis as a clinician, I really feel like the reverse of that is true, that one of the main reasons we have such high rates of obesity in the United States, and it's progressing throughout the world, but I'm particularly talking about the United States today, that it's due to undiagnosed insulin resistance, maybe even impaired glucose tolerance, prediabetes, or diabetes, because it's all on a spectrum. And if you don't believe me, you can look at the National Haynes data. There was a study that was done after collecting National Haynes data on patients from 1999 to 2004. And what that showed is that if you looked at patients who were obese, so that means a BMI over 30, about 70% of those walking into your office are going to be insulin resistant. Actually, this study went a step further and said they will fulfill the criteria for the cardiometabolic syndrome. And I'll get to what the differences are in just a little while. Because we know that out of the traits for the cardiometabolic syndrome, insulin resistance is emerging as the most important one. So for just a moment here, I'm going to ask you to consider, instead of looking at cardiometabolic syndrome, insulin resistance. So if they're obese, BMI over 30, about 70% of those walking into your office are going to be insulin resistant. That's pretty much, I think, a no-brainer for most of us that are practicing medicine. But what if they're overweight, but they're not obese? So they have a BMI of 25 to 30. About half of them, according to this National Haynes data study, will be insulin resistant and fulfill the rates for the cardiometabolic syndrome. But what if they're not overweight? What if their BMI is less than 25? Just how many of those do you think are going to be insulin resistant? Well, according to the study, it was over 26% of them. So over one third, I'm sorry, over one fourth, a little bit less than one quarter. But I think with my experience today in 2017, I actually think that that is much higher. 